How do I set up a Hyper-V server at home for free? I think we should find out. Hyper-V is Microsoft's virtualization platform and setting it up as a home virtualization solution is an expensive option. Perhaps you just want to learn how to use it or test Hyper-V virtualization for an upcoming project at work. What if I told you that Microsoft offers a fully functional Hyper-V server to download for free directly from its site? Would you be interested? Well, Microsoft do offer its Hyper-V 2019 core server for free with no strings attached and no license to activate. The download is the core version of Windows Server 2019. It doesn't have a graphical user interface, but it does have all the Hyper-V components installed by default. The utility called sconfig is used instead to configure the server. To manage the server, we'll install another free component from Microsoft called Windows Admin Center. This will be installed in gateway mode on the server. We'll use Windows Admin Center to manage our virtual machines. Since we're installing Windows Admin Center in gateway mode, anybody on the network will be able to access the Hyper-V server using their browser. So the first step is to have hardware that's compatible with Hyper-V. The second step is to download the Hyper-V software from Microsoft and create a bootable USB drive. The third step is to build and configure the server. The fourth step is to install Windows Admin Center in gateway mode. And the fifth step is to connect to the Hyper-V server from your browser on any computer on your network. So let's start with the hardware requirements for the server first. The server can be a traditional server or a computer with enough processing power, memory and hard disk space. These are the actual requirements from Microsoft from their website. All links are included in the video description below. And the first one is uh, the power of the processor itself. I would definitely recommend that you have at least a i7 or an i5 processor. Almost all laptops and computers in the past five years or so um, will be 64-bit. So that shouldn't be a problem. The next requirement is a security requirement. And again, most processors should have this, as will they have this requirement here. Uh, the most important requirement is this one here, which is SLAT. If you're not sure, what you can do is use this uh, utility here called Core Info to find out if your processor is supported. In terms of memory, I would actually recommend that you have at least 16 gigabytes if you intend to have a Hyper-V server for a lab environment or for a production environment on your home network. In terms of disk capacity, I would definitely recommend an SSD rather than a traditional mechanical hard drive. And you should be looking to have around half a terabyte to a terabyte, depending on how many virtual machines you intend to have. Another requirement is to make sure that you enable virtualization in the BIOS on your computer. Let's move on to the next step. What we'll do is download the Hyper-V Server 2019 ISO file by going to the Microsoft Evaluation Center. Here you'll need to fill in a few details and then you can download the ISO file which is around three gigabytes. To use the ISO file, you'll need to create a bootable USB drive and you can use a utility like Rufus, which I would recommend on a Windows PC, or you can use Etcher, which I would recommend on a Linux PC or on Mac OS. Now we'll go through the Windows Server installation by plugging in and booting from the USB drive. It's a standard Windows setup and you should know that if you are using an old laptop or PC, this will wipe the hard drive, so you have been warned. Please back up your files. And yes, I'm talking to you, that one person who's going to leave me a comment saying he's lost all his important data. Once installed, we need to set the admin password and then the server boots into a terminal and PowerShell window with the sconfig utility ready to configure the server. Here I'm going to choose option 2 to set the host name of the server. I'll call it Hyper-V01.
The next option is to choose a local administrator, so I'll set that up with a password. The other options I configure are setting Windows updates to automatic, downloading and installing all updates, enabling remote desktop, and setting a static IP address for the server. OK, so now we're ready to install Windows Admin Center, which will be used to manage the server from a browser. And the first thing to do is go into PowerShell mode. And then I'm going to create a new object to hold our download, which will be the Windows Admin Center MSI file. And this way I can download it directly to this server. The URL is given here. And this argument is used to name the file that's downloaded. So I'm calling it wac.msi. As you can see, the file's downloaded and it's called wac.msi. And I'm going to run the file. Although Windows Server Core doesn't have a graphical user interface, you can run some of these utilities in graphical mode. I'm going to choose the defaults and what this is doing is installing Windows Admin Center in gateway mode. Once this is installed, we're ready to connect from a browser. On my Windows workstation, I can now go into the browser and type in the IP address of the server. I'll enter my username and password that I set up on the server and this will let me into the server through Windows Admin Center. Once I'm in, I can see lots of information about how to manage the server, but what we're interested in is how to set up virtual machines. So I'll go to the virtual machine section at the bottom. Here I can add a virtual machine and set all the normal parameters for the machine, like the processor, memory, network, and storage. If you're wondering how you can get an ISO onto the server, you just go into Files and File Sharing, set up a folder, and then you can use the Upload option, which gives you access to your workstation that you're connecting from. You also have the option for virtual switches, including an internal, private, and external network. For more complex tasks, you can connect to PowerShell directly in the browser to the server. That's pretty good, I think. So that's how you set up a Hyper-V server at home for free. I hope you've learned something today and enjoyed this episode. If you're new here at STEC Systems, the IT Skills Library is a collection of questions and answers to build your IT skills one answer at a time. Subscribe now and start building your skills today.